I'm Chef John Foles. Food is so much more than nutrition here in the South. Every weekend on Louisiana's Back Roads and Bayous, our festivals celebrate the food, music, and cultures that make us unique. Why not join me as we visit the fairs and festivals of our state and cook up another great taste of Louisiana. Funding for this program is provided by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Vieux Carré, Zydeco, Achafalaya, Natchitoches. In Louisiana, you'll say things you've never seen before. Today we're crossing the Achafalaya Basin on one of the longest raised highways in America as we travel to Lafayette, Louisiana to attend Festivals Acadien. This festival is held in the heart of Bayou Country on the third weekend of September each year. This celebration of Louisiana's food and cultures combined the activities of four previous festivals from South Louisiana. Today, the Festivals de Musique Acadien, the Bayou Food Festival, the Louisiana Native Crafts Festival, and Downtown Alive have merged into an event known as Festivals Acadien. And if you don't think this is a down-home festival, some even bring their home furnishings to capture the best spots to view today's events. Food is imperative to the success of a Louisiana festival, and rest assured, there will be many varieties here this weekend. Keep a line up for a plate of spicy seafood jambalaya, and to ensure that we won't run out of this delicacy over the festival, a second gigantic pot is made ready by the cooks. Personally, I think weekend celebrations are the perfect place to experience new and innovative dishes, which are sure to be found along the midway. Cajun cooks pride themselves in the ability to combine fresh ingredients and spices into a masterpiece that will capture the crowd's attention. Here, members of a food booth named How Men Cook batter and deep fry shrimp and onions in a spicy Cajun blend and serve them shish kebab style. Judging from the size of the shrimp, you can bet your life that the lines will be continuous at this booth all weekend long. Anyone living in South Louisiana, especially chefs, know of the famous Poupart's Baker. Mr. Poupart came to South Louisiana from France many years ago and baked some of the finest French bread to be found. On any festival weekend, one is certain to recognize his famous breads designed after the wild beast of Cajun country. Alligators, teddy bears, bullfrogs, not only do they taste great, there's sure to be a showstopper for the crowds. You can either buy a loaf to take home or just eat it as you walk along the festival grounds. Well, no, nope, this isn't plain old smoked sausage you see these guys grilling. It's alligator sausage on the grill, about to be made ready for those great Louisiana po'boy sandwiches, I'm sure, on Mr. Poupart's bread. Food of every type, including crawfish etouffee, not only fires up the crowd, but those serving it just have to start dancing. Foods, crafts, music, yep, that's what Festival Zacadien is all about. Music is ever present this weekend, and even the local percussion group who call themselves Les Pabons, that means the no good, seem pretty doggone good to me. The group is made up of those playing triangles, spoons, washboards, and even a couple of girlfriends who kind of tap on the tambourine. Just goes to show you, you know, that everybody in Cajun country has a little music and dance in them. Oh, look at these right in the mud here. Whenever Cajuns get together, a tradition is sure to be born, and that's evident here today. Each year, the festival closes with the sacrifice of the watermelon, and I guess that's pretty easy to see what that's all about. Well, take off your shoes, put a dance in your step, and pick up a triangle. It's time for Festival Zacadien. Do we know how to have a good time in Cajun country or what? Here we have four festivals combining in the heart of Lafayette, Louisiana, for a weekend of some of the greatest festivities honoring food, music, crafts, arts, you name it. And it is fantastic. You need to come and be a part of it. This or one of the other 400 or so festivals in Louisiana. This one's real special because it's not only in the heart of Cajun country, in the hub of Cajun country, but you have an opportunity to travel all around Lafayette, which is some of the most scenic, the most gorgeous 
of all of the Louisiana landscape. So come be a part of that Bayou Country Weekend Festivals Acadien. Now, you know the foods, I think about the trouble I have to figure out what foods we're going to serve when there's so many foods available at the festival that weekend. I was looking at that spicy jambalaya, which was just fantastic. I had a nice bowl of it. And uh, I start to think about the different varieties, the different types of jambalayas available to us. There was a very famous senator in Louisiana, Alan Ellender, who came from Thibodeau, Louisiana, another little Cajun town on Bayou Lafourche, and he was famous for a dish called oyster jambalaya, which he cooked uh, for, for Congress every year from 1935 to 1972 when he died. It was, he was famous for the oyster jambalaya as well as his gumbo, and I wanted to do the spicy oyster jambalaya of Alan Ellender uh, for you, and hopefully that'll be something that's going to be done at one of the Louisiana festivals when you're walking the Midway. Look at my little bowl here. Take a look at this nice little pottery bowl. It has all of these great ingredients in it from Ellender's uh, Jambalaya. We have some smoked sausage, three different types, in fact. This is the, uh, the smoked sausage that's light smoked. Look at the dark smoked, a, a, a lot darker, heavier wood. And of course, this one right here has a little bit more fat in it. Uh, you can see it here. So some people like the fattier sausage. They say it gives it more flavor. But I like the heavy smoke. This is the undoing. The Cajun ham, basically, in a casing. It becomes a great sausage. And this is the tasso, a nice lean ham seasoned on the outside. And all of these go to flavor uh, the jambalaya. Of course, oysters. This is the Louisiana oyster. And I want to show you how we open these. I have a little uh, piece of lead here. This is a, a, a little lead figure eight that the oyster shells go down into. And then you use a basic oyster knife. Just go down inside an oyster and pop it open. It's real easy to do. And then, of course, just go ahead and cut that little muscle out of the way. And then I'll put this with the rest of my oysters that's going into uh, Ellender's uh, jambalaya right there. Now, I have a black iron pot, so to put all of the ingredients to cooking. I'm going to put a little of my buttery flavored oil down in here, and then I'm going to saute all of the different meats. And you can imagine the amount of smoke that's going to instantly go into this pot once I put all of these sausages and tasso and ondu and, my God, all these nice things. And I want this to saute to add not only the smoky flavor, but of course this is the meat that's going to help flavor that jambalaya. And once that's in, I'll saute this for just a second because we want to get all of those nice flavors working together here. And once that's in, now I can come back and add the typical flavors of Louisiana cooking, the onions, the celery, the bell pepper, all of those great things that we like to put in our pots whenever we're cooking jambalaya or etouffee or anything else. I'm going to throw those in there. And as much as you want, you can see that measurements are very important in Louisiana cooking by the amount that I'm throwing in without measuring. And of course a little garlic. These are the colored peppers because I want a nice looking dish as well as a good tasting dish. A little garlic, a lot, lot of garlic. Put that in. Some fresh tomatoes. And you can see how pretty this is. This is some real pretty food too. Not only does it taste good, it is so good looking. And that's one of the important things I think about cooking. Does food look as good as it tastes? Well, it should. And once all of that's in, blend all of that around real nicely. I'll add my tomato sauce because this is going to give the jambalaya a red look. And a lot of people in Louisiana prefer the dark jambalaya, the brown jambalaya that comes from caramelizing the meat on the bottom of the pot to give it that nice dark flavor. But the true early jambalayas were, in fact, red because they were Creole in origin. Now, once that's in, I'm going to put a little stock, and I'm using... Oh, fish stock, you can use chicken stock, you can even use water. I mean, you don't have to use stock in this dish, but I always think stock flavors the pot a lot better than just water. But look at all of the ingredients, so you know good and well there's going to be a lot of good flavor here, regardless of stock or water. Now, that, uh, we want to bring this to a good rolling boil. You want all of these ingredients to simmer together for about 15, 20, 30 minutes for all the flavors to develop, and then we can come back and season it. Uh, Mr. Ellender used to put a little bit lemon zest. He, had, he, he liked it kind of tart. He would put some bay leaves in it. And uh, then once it came to a boil, he would add the rice. Now, you want to always let this cook for a little while before you add the rice because you want to bring it to a rolling boil add, and use a converted rice. I use converted rice rather than just a, a typical long grain 
because it's more forgiving. You can actually, you, you, if it's too dry, add a little water. If it's too wet, add a little rice. It'll forgive as it goes along the way. A little pepper, a little salt. Let, again, let your imagination run wild on the spice. A little basil and thyme. Throw some of that in there. And, of course, now the rice. And I add, remember the formula here about a cup and a half of liquid to every cup of rice. It'll be perfect, a cup and a half of liquid to a cup of rice. And once that's in, of course, the oysters. Now, I'm adding the oysters. After it comes to a boil, I'll add the oysters right in. These are wonderful oysters. Oysters have been around for so many millions of years. In fact, one of the largest oyster beds in the world were uncovered right out of Denmark, and that bed was about two or three miles long, about 400 feet deep, going back about a million years. So we know that oysters were being eaten so many years ago uh, all over the world. Of course, the best oysters, we think, are here in America. The French and English oysters are kind of coppery tasting. The American oysters are real sweet. We love them, they hate them, and vice versa. So I like them the best. I like Louisiana oysters out of the Gulf better than any. Now I want to show you what it looks like once it's done because this is going to take about 30 minutes to cook. So we want to make sure that we lower the fire and put the lid on and don't open that for 30 minutes on a low, low heat and look what it's going to look like when it's done. Isn't this beautiful? Look at that nice red color. Beautiful oysters on right on top. Let people know what's in the dish. Put a little bit of that uh, oyster right on the top. Look at all those nice smoked meats. Wonderful dish. Okay, Alan Allender's oyster jambalaya. I know that's going to be a big hit at some festival next year. Now, another dish that I want to do for you very, very quickly, using fish, using trout, in fact, one of the, one of the best fish of Louisiana. You have to look at my platter. This is incredible. This platter comes from the, comes from the, the area of France where the Cajuns came from. In fact, there's a little Cajun singing painted on the bottom. I'm going to let you peek down there. See the man and woman? Up, that's all. Can't see any more there. Tell you about that later. This is a beautiful platter, hand painted in the area of Brittany. This is speckled trout. I have some crawfish here, some lump crab. This is wild oyster mushrooms, which are very nice in Louisiana cooking. And of course, I have a fillet of speckled trout that I'm going to pan saute and make a little Mornay sauce, a little cheese sauce, using this wonderful speckled trout. And again, one of the dishes from the festival's Acadien. I have two really nice uh, skillets here, and I'm going to fire them up, get a little more heat on them, because when you saute anything, you want to saute in oil. You want to get that oil to about 300, or oh, about 50 degrees to put a really nice heat on it. And you want to take your fish. I have a nice fillet of fish right here. And I'm going to take the fillet of speckled trout. It's already lightly seasoned with a little salt and pepper. And I'm going to dust it in some seasoned flour here. I'm going to just put a touch of flour on the outside, I don't want any heavy breadings. I don't want any milk or batters and all of that. Just dust it, shake off all of the excess. And I want to make sure that this is nice and hot because when you saute, you want the oil about 350. And you want to kind of get in. And you see it's starting to sizzle just a little bit on that pan. And that's what you want to get. You want to get that nice sizzle in the skillet to slowly brown and keep the moisture in. Now I'm going to make the sauce while that's sauteing, and I have another skillet right here. I'm going to put a little buttery flavored oil in, and to make my sauce, a Mornay sauce is a falute or cream-based sauce if you want to add cream, I won't today, but I'm going to start it off the same way. I do my other dishes, onion, celery, bell pepper, and put some colored bell pepper because this is a sauce, so you want it to look really nice. Of course, I like everything looking nice anyway. Orange bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, Kind of throw it in the pot. A little touch of garlic. You, you ever notice how all of our dishes basically have the same components, the same flavors going in? Because that's what Cajun and Creoles love in the pot. Onion, celery, bell pepper to start all of our dishes off. Once this is in, then we can come in and add whatever flavors we want. I'm going to add, as I showed you a minute ago, crawfish and lump crab meat because this is a Mornay sauce using seafoods. Of course, you can use this as a dip. You can make a wonderful dip with this uh, for the holidays if you wanted to, or when you have friends coming over. This is a great seafood dip with crackers. So I'm sauteing the crab and crawfish, and then I'll have to make a little light roux by adding some flour to the dish, just a little bit flour to pick up that butter, not too much. 
And then, once it's blended in, I want to add just a little touch of stock to make a volute. A volute is any stock that is thickened with a little roux to create a sauce. And then you could come back and add cream to it if you wanted to to make a bisque. That's what a bisque is. Any volute with a little cream in it. I can see this stock. I'm going to whip that around just a little bit. And you can see how it's going to have that really nice look to it. It's going to start to thicken very quickly. See how thick that is? I'm going to add a little touch of wine. Let me flip my little fish here because I think that fish of mine ought to be just about right. Ooh, look at that. Is it right or what? Just a couple minutes. Don't overcook fish. People tend to overcook fish. And I'm going to add some mushrooms to my sauce. These are the wild oyster mushrooms we talked about a minute ago. And then, of course, I could come in again with any seasonings I want. I'm going to put a little basil and thyme here, just kind of sprinkle it in. I'm going to put a little bit of that Louisiana hot sauce to give it a little spice. And then some salt and pepper, just as much salt and pepper as you would want in the dish. And this becomes the sauce for our Marnay, our speckled trout Marnay. Look how fast it cooks, too. It just takes a minute to wilt all of those vegetables. So what I'll do is to take a plate. I want to show you how this plates up nicely. And again, you may think this fish is not cooked all the way through. It only takes a couple minutes on each side, so don't overcook it. Let me get this on my plate. All right. Now, a little bit of the Marnay sauce. And this is really nice. You could add heavy whipping cream to it if you wanted to. You could add whatever flavors you want. Of course, I'm not going to add all of those fats. This is enough right here. Okay, now to finish it, of course, we'd want to come to the cutting board here and put some of those pretty colors on it. You know how I'm, I'm wild about all those nice colors. A little carrot. And it makes a beautiful plate presentation. Isn't that fantastic? The nice speckled trout with the Marnay. Add some cheese on it right at the end. Cheddar cheese or just a little parmesan, it's fantastic. Okay, now I want to show you a couple other dishes that we've prepared from the festival. This is a little lemon quail. This is a sauteed quail and a little squeeze of lemon juice. You can see how nice and shiny they are. And then right next to it, one of my favorite, a charcuterie platter. It's all of the meats of Cajun country. We have the red boudin, the white boudin, the seafood boudin, gratin or crackling, hogshead cheese. Ooh, Lord, little crackers drives me crazy. I love that stuff. Now, let me tell you about my guest. I didn't mention him at the top of the hour, Michael Doucet, the founder of Bosselet, the great Cajun band, and he's coming in right now. Come on, so much. <laughs> come see, come All right. Come live here. Wait. <laughs> Michael is world famous with Cajun music, and I tell you what, I, we are so happy to have him with us today. And uh, tell me, you, when we were talking last about Cajun music, you were telling me that part of your contract is very specific about one item. Well, you know, we play a lot of places around and people are really, they want to, they want to serve us Cajun food, so we said, no, we don't take Cajun food outside of Louisiana, we, 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 unless we cook it, you know. <laughs> so you won't even let them, but everybody wants to serve you Cajun food? Well, they try, it's getting better, it's getting better, but we're, we're some good cooks too, so I mean, you know, they get, they up against a hard thing. T talk about good cooks. You and I were talking about that sauteed crawfish, the hot crawfish salad oh, yeah. with the spinach, remember? Oh, yeah. I want, I want to show everybody what it looks like. So I'm going to saute this quickly, and Mike's going to help me do it. I'm putting a little buttery-flavored oil in here again. And just hand me all of those wonderful ingredients over there. We're going to put, this is a hot crawfish salad that we're going to do with uh, spinach, onion, celery, bell pepper again, a little bit tomato for that nice color. We're going to put mushrooms in. Again, this is all the typical flavors of South Louisiana's Cajun country. Doesn't that smell good? Man, your house uh, smells the best. <laughs> <laughs> you can always tell when somebody's cooking, right? Now I'm going to put the crawfish in. And uh, why don't you just kind of stir that for one second there and just blend it all together. We just want to get those nice flavors in there. Now we can come in and put a little of that Creole mustard. Just put me a little spoonful down there, Michael, and spin that around a little bit. And, of course, the lemon basil, thyme, throw it all in there. Well, there really you go, that. perfect. I'm going to put a lot of lemon in here. And then a little of that basil and thyme, just a couple pinches. And then I'm going to finish it with a little cane vinegar. This is cane syrup vinegar. Now, I don't know if many people know what this is, but this is the vinegar that's sweetened with sugar cane syrup, sugar cane juice. And of course, it makes a nice, nice salad dressing. So I'm going to take this, and I have that big bowl of, of uh, spinach over there. You see it? Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put this hot crawfish right over the spinach and 
Michael, I want you to kind of stir that in for me. It's going to wilt the spinach as it hits that, and it's going to be just a fantastic salad. Something that you can put together really fast. Isn't that nice? Oh, this is wonderful. And I can come back and season it. I tell you, you do that pretty good. I thought you only played the fiddle. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. Well, we play for a lot of people who cook, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. That looks fine. And I tell you what, I want to sit down and talk a little bit about the band and talk about the things. Why don't you pull up a seat over here? That's great. Thank you so much for helping me with that, uh, with that salad. Michael, do you come? I mean, so, so world famous. I mean, everybody, in the, everybody on the globe knows uh, Beausoleil and Michael Doucet. Did you come from a musical family? Well, I had a lot of people around the house who played, and uh, we, uh, we came from a large family. My father had a lot of sisters and brothers, and it was a time before we had a television, so I guess everybody used to play music. I don't think I, I know a family who doesn't play music that lived around the house, both fiddles and, or jazz or anything, so music was always there. And then, of course, TV comes along and it changes, <laughs> but I think everybody liked to dance and have a good time. What about Cajun music? The sound is so distinctive. What makes it different to the other ears outside of Bayou Country? Well, that's a good question. I always wondered about that. Someone said, you know, I don't have, understand a word you say, but it's like opera. I don't understand a word of opera, but I love it. And I said, well, it's nice to be compared to opera. <laughs> I think it just, it, it, just, it just really hits the heart because uh, it's, it's soulful music. I mean, we play music that's been around for generations, and it means something. And when you continue that sound, that feeling, it's, it hits something so close to home, even if you don't understand the words or where did this stuff come from, people sort of feel really close to it. So they have a kinship to it very, exactly. very quickly. Now, I know that you took uh, not, not only f not formal instruction, but just sitting at the, the knees of the greatest old Cajun musicians. Well, you've learned a lot from them. They've been gone. They've passed away many years ago. What do you bring to your current music from what you learned back then? Sort of their spirit. I think, because I was very fortunate to just, it's like you and I right here, to be able to sit with you and smell and <laughs> hopefully to eat what you have. When these, these amazing people, I mean, they were master musicians, but just ordinary people, and they had such a gift. And to be able to sit down one-to-one -one and just absorb not only their music, their philosophy and their history, because some of these people lived to be, you know, almost 90 years old. So it was something that it was just uh, unimaginable. It was like, you know, the master be able to do that right. and very simple people but, but very fine people so I guess I just through osmosis I guess I, I, I just developed a sort of spirit so every time we play their songs and we like to do that then we kind of relive those times and bring them back and give them to people who never had the chance to hear what uh, what's the future of Cajun music is there any young people coming coming up who's oh, gonna follow yeah. in your footsteps where do you think it's going well, I don't know in my footsteps there's, <laughs> there's, there's many of them and it's, it's great I think now there's, there's a more of a resurgence of this music than any other time it was a low ebb in the 70s and the late 60s but now it's it's a uh, people are excited about it everywhere we go in the country people jump up and dance I think that's you know said, well, you know we were in Billings Montana and the first note we played people would dance the whole time said, where are we man you know northern Louisiana I don't know <laughs> so it's it's been it's been really amazing. Uh, well, what about the band, Bosel? I mean, you've traveled all over the world. You've paid. I mean, movie. I, you name it. You've been there. Um, wh where are you going from here? Uh, what's the future for the band? Well, that's a good question. Well, we're celebrating our 20th year together, which is a long time. But I think we just developed into into different uh, artists and different ideas, and just continue what we started 20 years ago. That's to show basically the whole gamut of French music of Louisiana, not only two steps and waltzes, but the ballads, the, the forgotten ballads that you can't really dance to, some of the fiddle reels, some of the blues, some of the jazz, uh, some old stuff. The whole the whole history of Cajun music. That's what we love. That's what we play. That's what, who we are. So we're going to continue doing what we do. <laughs> well, you do a great job of it. I know there's a lot of demand for it. We, we've been, we've cooked. We've oh. uh, done a little crawfish right here. Uh, do you do any songs at all about food? Well, yeah, of course I do songs about <laughs> food, John. I mean, in fact, uh, one is, is uh, what you happen to use for your theme, you know, uh, this one called Tasso. And uh, it's a place that was called Tasso, but of course Tasso is the meat you cook with. Uh, there was a song we did about coffee. We did a coffee commercial. <laughs> We're really coffee fanatics. Right. We bring our own coffee. It's another thing I contract. We serve our own coffee. And uh, so we, we do that. But I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's something when you get together, with, with, usually with friends, you always have music. You always have a great food. And, and, and the, the better the cook, the better the music, and vice versa. You know? Well, you, you, you mentioned my theme song for the show. Uh, you, you are good enough to, uh, to hand that for, and everybody hears it every week, and I want you to play it for us, and, but, but it. before you do that, I want to thank you for stopping by the kitchen and come thank back you, and sing again, oh. and y'all come back again, too, as we continue to visit fairs and festivals, but more importantly, cook up great taste of Louisiana. Let's listen to my theme song live. <laughs> <laughs>
Funding for this program is provided by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Ville Carre, Zydeco, Achafalaya, Natchitoches. In Louisiana, you'll say things you've never seen before. More information on events in Louisiana can be yours at no cost. Call 1-800-36-GUMBO for your free Louisiana tour guide, listing festivals, attractions, and points of interest throughout the Bayou State. Chef John Fulce's Louisiana Sampler, a companion cookbook to this series, contains the colorful history and culinary secrets behind Louisiana's most exciting festivals. For your copy, send a check or money order for $19.95 to Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Or use your credit card by calling toll-free 1-800-973-7246.